For 75 years, the Florida Department of Health in Lake County has led the way in delivering compassionate and quality health care to the residents of Lake County. To fully understand the rich legacy of DOH Lake, it is important to understand the era that facilitated its creation. When the Lake County Board of Commissioners created the department on October 1, 1938, the entire nation was mired in the depths of the Great Depression. At that time, residents living in rural America had little to no medical care available. The creation of the unit was a very progressive step in times when funds were scarce, and as a memorial to their courage and foresight, county officials determined to create one of the very first public health units in Florida. The cost to establish the Lake Health Unit was $13,300. The county supplied $6,500 through a one mil tax increase, and the remainder was funded through state and federal programs. The department's first director, Dr. Terry Bird, described their initial mission as one of education and prevention rather than that of curing disease. In those early days, the department's sanitation program instructed restaurants, schools, dairies, and tourist areas in the proper methods of sanitation. In 1955, the first inactivated polio vaccine was created, and the health unit staff selflessly spearheaded the drive to inoculate all Lake County citizens. Once the polio vaccine came out, because I, I remember as a child standing in line for it, you know, everybody in our school was just lined up. I remember um, several years of the, working with the Kiwanians who had a Young Children Priority One program at that time, um, and the Kiwanis Clubs coming out and helping the health department nurses and uh, clerks and everyone that was there to be immunized. All the time, I always think of Lake County as being very involved and helping other people and uh, people knowing people and just wanting to help. Down through the years, whenever there were outbreaks of communicable diseases such as polio, smallpox, diphtheria, and others, the department's brave nurses and doctors were always there putting their own lives on the line to save others in the battle against disease and possible disability or death. The department's role in promoting public hygiene became invaluable as scientific discovery proved that communicable diseases were caused by viruses and common bacteria that were easily spread from person to person. Through insight and planning, unit directors and staff slowly but surely taught what was then a simple, mainly agricultural population that hygiene and lifestyle were of utmost importance to good family health. In the 40s and 50s, staff responsibilities expanded to include prenatal care of prospective mothers, an increased focus on students' physical and mental health, assistance to diabetics, promoting awareness of heart disease and cancer, milk safety through dairy inspections, mosquito and pest control programs, and the treatment of persons suffering from communicable diseases such as tuberculosis or syphilis. I started back in May of 1974 with the Lake County Health Department and uh, we had about 35 employees in those days and we had our main office in Tavares and we had two phone lines for the whole department. Our sanitary code, which is our regulations back in those days, was about 60 pages total. Today our SEPI tank code is 120, and that's one of 20 different codes we regulate. So things have progressed. The advent of the sexual revolution and an increased awareness of women's health issues in the 60s and 70s led to the creation of family planning services, teen pregnancy programs, and a concerted effort to control the spread of sexually transmitted diseases. During this era, the department also undertook a major challenge as it expanded into the area of primary health care. In the 1980s, more residents began to look to the department for all their health care needs. As services expanded to meet those needs, it began to create a financial burden on the county. For the first time in its history, the department began to charge for its health services. However small this amount may seem now, it was enough to help maintain the level of service area residents had come to know and eventually led to an even greater expansion of services. I'm Vera Hart and I've been with the Department of Health for 34 years. Back then, most people thought you had to be poor in order to get services from the health department. That was the stigma that we was associated with. You know, only poor people go to the health department, but that is not true. I mean, we've come a long ways. Where we came from is when I first transferred in 79, a small, tiny building, and now look where we are now. I mean, we have nine different clinics in different locations. Uh, we have dedicated employees. Back then, we had 22 employees. 
Now we have 178 employees. So that could tell you right there, we are growing and we will continue to grow. My name is Darlene Genrick. I started my journey with the Florida Department of Health in 1975. I was born and raised in Leesburg and we went to the health department for our immunizations and I remember back when polio, um, you got a sugar cube and we thought that was a tree, not an immunization until the nurse come at you with a needle for smallpox or something like that. We offer free immunizations for children. We have the prescription assistance program through the Compassionate Care Program. Uh, a lot of our epi services, communicable disease programs are free, and outreach, tobacco, and diabetes programs we offer to the public. The Florida Department of Health is expanding its services to include many insurances. And the reason we're expanding to include these insurances, we want to be able to give the clients more diagnostic services uh, to, to allow them to have the same level of care that a private physician would. Our goal here with the Florida Department of Health is to make sure that every patient that comes through our door, whether they're here for paperwork, client services, information, it doesn't matter what they need or want, we want to make sure that it's fulfilled and we've done the best possible job for this client. Our nurses put their lives on the line. Every day if there's an outbreak, they do it. There's no question about who you want to send, they volunteer. No matter what it takes, they will get the job done. No matter how long it would take, they will get the job done. And that's what it's all about. You've got to have that drive. You've got to have that push. And that's what they're striving for every day. Our staff is wonderful. I have worked with them for so many years. And I can't say enough about our staff because they are wonderful employees. The programs that we offer are either mandated programs that are required by statute or non-mandated programs that are based on the local need. And some of our programs that are mandated are our environmental health program, our communicable disease epidemiology surveillance program, which includes sexually transmitted disease infections and TB, and vaccine for children, and there are many others that are mandated. The programs that are non-mandated are programs such as dental services for children, adult health, which is primary care, creating a medical home, for the medically needy clients in our community. We also offer uh, maternity services, which falls into the non-mandated, as well as HIV AIDS clinical services. And there are many other non-mandated we offer, so we are constantly looking and working with our key providers in our community as to what are the local needs here in Lake County and what services do we need to be part of to expand that to our citizens in Lake. We would like to be able to expand some of our programs to all of our clinical sites. Right now our Umatilla Health Center uh, offers every program clinically. We are a very, very large, geographically challenged county. So we feel that we need to expand all our services in all three areas of our county so that as many of our citizens could uh, utilize our services as possible. We have come a long way in 75 years, and I am very proud to be able to lead such a wonderful organization. For 75 years, the Florida Department of Health in Lake County has been the first line of defense against illness and disease, and in many cases, the primary care facilitator for tens of thousands of county residents. Countless hours of tireless servitude are the badge of honor worn by employees from desk clerks to administrators as each person dedicates his or her life to the preservation of their neighbor's health. There is no greater love than this, that a person would lay down his or her life for a friend. May our next 75 years change and save even more lives than the first.